In Mexico, people were getting snatched off the streets on a regular. Jordan, the lawyer, tells his client, Samuel, that he needs to invest in some kidnapping insurance to protect his family. But to get the insurance, Samuel's gonna have to get a bodyguard. And right now, his pockets are kinda tight. That brings us to two old CIA buddies, Ray and Creasy. Ray has managed to get his life on track while Creasy is having trouble fitting back into normal society. Ray gets Creasy an interview to become the bodyguard for Sam's family. Even though Creasy doesn't have experience and he's a drunk, money talks. Creasy is introduced to Sam's wife, Lisa. She tilts her head any further, it's gonna fall off her neck. Creasy then meets their daughter, Peta. She's pretty wise for her age and comes across as a straight shooter. As Lisa tucks her in for the night, Peta has already taken a liking to Creasy. Creasy's nightcap consists of gunplay and hanging out with his old buddy, Jack. First day of work, little Peter comes in red hot with facts and questions. Baby girl, let the brother breathe. He can't tell his whole life story in one car ride. He drops her off, hangs out, picks her up, and I'll be damn it, little Peter continues her interrogation. Well, this ain't what the brother signed up for. He puts an end to the questions. In the middle of traffic, little Peter hops out the car and gets into the back seat. Okay, so it's like that now, huh? The gig is weighing Creasy down already, but Captain Jack is always there with a sympathetic ear. Mama Lisa tells Creasy that little Peter just wants to be friends. Creasy reminds her that he's there to be a bodyguard, not a friend. Being a friend's gonna cost extra. Man, I know the day was rough, but it wasn't that rough. Now this brother got a gun to his head. Turns out that Creasy's demons have demons. Whatever he did in the CIA, he can't seem to shake it. He calls Ray up in the middle of the night and asks him if he ever had a 9mm round not go off. Ray says, yeah, but wonders what the hell was he shooting at. It's day two, and little Peter is quiet as a church mouse now. Creasy spots a car telling him. He wants to get the license plate number, but don't sleep. Little Peter is already on it. Creasy's posted up at Peter's swim practice. He notices that she's good, not great. On the way home, he shares analysis on how she can improve, and the two are back on good terms. Mom and dad are off to go live their best life. This presents the opportunity for Creasy and Peter to bond. Time to transform little Peter into Peter Phelps. Peter's flaw is that she has a bad reaction to the starter pistol. She flinches. After that, she's already behind in playing catch up. In no time, the two become like old friends who can laugh and smile over anything. Mama Lisa walks in on the two having a good time. She's relieved that Peter has someone she can trust, but Mama and Daddy gotta get back in them streets. So it's Creasy who takes Peter to the meet. He's bodyguard, friend, and now Daddy. Give that man a raise. Peter is set, the gun goes off, she doesn't flinch, and she's off. She manages to win the race and all is right with the world. At the celebration dinner, she gives Creasy a necklace. She is trying really hard to make her brother cry. She got him breaking up with Jack and picking up the Bible. Fresh off her victory, Peter tells her dad she no longer wants to play piano. She wants to swim. But he ain't trying to hear all that, so it's off to piano lessons. Creasy sees her in, and then he takes his spot on the bench to chill. But Creasy notices that something, 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 something just ain't right. A bunch of police are pulling up, blocking off streets. Cats in cheap sunglasses are driving by slowly. Then he notices some of the numbers in the license plate. This is beginning to look like a setup. Peter exits her practice and shit goes down. Gunshots ring out. Crooked cops getting shot, crooked crooks getting shot, and unfortunately, Creasy gets shot too. But Peter is a real G. She lives by the motto, no man left behind. She goes to check on Creasy, and in that moment, she gets snatched up. The police, they're celebrating that they got the man who put down two of their officers. Reporter Mariana knows these cops are corrupt. Along with AFI agent Miguel, they watch the propaganda shit show. Creasy wakes up in the hospital with news from Ray that he managed to take down four men. But Creasy is concerned about the girl. Ray informs him that she's been gone for two days and that negotiations for ransom are ongoing. Agent Miguel tells Ray that they need to get Creasy out of the hospital because the cops want revenge. As Sam negotiates for the return of his daughter, Victor Fuentes of the kidnapping division inserts himself. Jordan, Sam's lawyer, lets him know that they're handling everything themselves. However, Fuentes insists. Sam finally gets a call from the kidnapper. He goes by the name The Voice. The lawyer takes over from Sam because Sam is too shaken. He gets instructions from The Voice on how to deliver the money. Sam is going to be accompanied by Fuentes. The ransom is for $10 million to be separated into two bags of $5 million each. The Voice lets them know that he is not with the shit. When it comes time to deliver the money, they came with some shit. Sam did his part of getting the money and delivering it to the drop-off spot. However, once he left, there was an ambush. 
ambush and the kidnappers were killed and the money stolen. The voice lets them know that they fucked up and Peter is dead. Lisa went off and smacked about five people in less than a second. Creasy wakes up in a makeshift hospital. He gets the news that the drop went south and as a result, Peter was killed. Then AFI agent Miguel shows up with a list of suspects. He asks Creasy if he recognizes any of them. Creasy recognizes them, but he says nothing. Miguel informs him that the men make up a group known as La Ramanda. They are responsible for Peter's death. Creasy has Ray take him out of the hospital and take him back to the scene of the crime. While there, he is approached by Mariana, the reporter. He thinks that she wants a scoop, but she wants to help him take down La Ramanda. Creasy decides that it's time for a whole lot of get back. Ray hooks him up with some folk that can help him build up an arsenal. Creasy returns to Lisa's place to get his things. He goes into Peter's room and finds her diary. Inside is the license plate number that she wrote down. On another page, he finds that she has written over and over and over that she loves him. Lisa walks in. He tells her that he plans on killing everyone responsible. Mariana comes through for Creasy when she finds the address connected with the license plate number. Creasy finds the guy and takes him to an isolated location. The guy tries some intimidation tactics, but he's speaking to a man who has no fucks left to give. Shit gets real, real quick when he begins to cut this dude's fingers off. That information started flowing fast then. Creasy manages to find out that the leader goes by the name The Voice. He also gets information about the guys who took Peter to the next location. But other than that, he doesn't get much information because The Voice runs an operation that's disjointed. With no more information to get from this guy, Creasy sends him off off the side of a cliff. This cat ain't fucking around. Creasy continues his revenge tour. He manages to get into a dance club ran by the guys who Peter was passed on to. It's time for some questions. Big Cat got disrespectful, shot him in the glass. He presses the next cat. With little resistance, he tells Creasy how things work. He doesn't know the people on the other end. He's supplied with an ATM card, which he makes withdrawals from on a weekly basis. During his information spill, Creasy learns for the first time that the ransom money was stolen and during the drop. This opens up a whole new line of questioning. The guy tells Creasy that a crooked cop, Fuentes, stole the money. Yes, the same Fuentes from the ransom negotiations. Then Creasy gives the guy a minute to pray and a second to die. Next up, the old lady in the room. She starts offering Creasy the girl. He doesn't know what girl she's talking about. It's another girl that they have captive in a cage. Creasy burns the club down. He gets in touch with Mariana. He's got another assignment for her. He wants her to find who's putting money on that ATM card. He tells her that his next victim is going to be the crooked cop Fuentes. She warns him that he won't be easy to get to. Agent Miguel doesn't necessarily support Creasy's actions. Actions, but he damn sure isn't against him. He questions Ray about who he's dealing with. Ray tells him that Creasy is an agent of death. Creasy can't get to Fuentes, but he can get within the vicinity. He breaks into an old couple's home across the street. There he sets up his attack. As Fuentes' motorcade arrives, he fires rockets from the apartment and blows them up. He then goes to the ground, commandeers the vehicle with Fuentes, and drives off. Next, we find Creasy and Fuentes together, with Fuentes bound across the hood of the vehicle. Fuentes finds out that his title won't save him here. He also finds out that he's got a booty full of Preparation H-bomb. Creasy wants to know what went down at the drop. Fuentes tells him that everything was going to plan. However, However, there was no $10 million. The money was stolen before the drop began. Creasy figures out that the lawyer, Jordan, must have been the one who took it. Creasy walks away and Fuentes has to deal with a banking booty. Next stop, Jordan the lawyer. But when Creasy arrives, he finds Jordan already dead with a severe head wound. He goes into Jordan's office and finds records of bank transactions, transactions in the name of Jordan and Sam. He calls Mariana to investigate these deposits into Cayman Island accounts. Creasy returns to the home of Lisa and Sam. It's time for some serious questions and some serious answers. Creasy stops Sam before he tries to control the conversation. He wants to know about the split of the ransom. Fuentes got 2.5 million. The lawyer got 2.5 million. So the other 5 million had to go to Sam. He comes clean that he was in on the kidnapping. He tells Lisa that he's been broke ever since he inherited his dad's money. Lisa wants an eye for an eye. Creasy loads the bullet that he earlier tried to use on himself. He leaves the next step in Sam's hands. As Creasy leaves, he hears the gunshot. Sam. 
he dead. Mariana is a damn superwoman. From the ATM card, she managed to get the address and even a photo of the voice. She plans on putting the photo in the newspaper. And even though a dude ran up on her about it, she still went ahead and published the photo. She bout that life. Creasy goes to the address and finds the voice's old lady and son there. The voice's brother kicks in the door and fires one into Creasy's chest. He tried to get away, but Creasy ran him down and brought him back into the apartment. Agent Miguel has the place bugged and is listening to everything that's going down. Creasy forces the voice's old lady to tell him his real name. He then takes the family atop the roof to call the voice. Creasy begins his conversation with the voice. The voice offers money. Creasy doesn't want money. He wants vengeance. The voice then makes him a surprising offer. In exchange for his life and his brother's life, the voice will return Peter to her mom. Creasy is shocked that she's still alive. Even though it means certain death, he agrees to the deal. On the way to the exchange, he calls Lisa and tells her to meet him as Peter may still be alive. They meet at the spot. He tells Lisa how things are going to go down to get Peter back. He begins his walk across the bridge. He's barely hanging on from the damage from the gunshot. The kidnappers let Peter out of the car and she sets a new record in the women's 100 meter dash running over to Creasy. The two embrace and profess their love. Not to lay anything too heavy on her, he tells Peter that he's about to go home to He's going home to meet the law. He gives himself up as Peter watches. As he collapses in the back seat of the car, he finally lets go and passes on. We find out that later on that day, Agent Miguel found the voice and put a hot one in the middle of his forehead. Mm -hmm.